In this chapter, we're going to talk about reflection. Uh, generally, when we think of reflection, uh, what we're talking about is light from our environment coming in and bouncing off the surface of our model. In the previous DVD, we talked about diffuse light and specular light. In diffuse light, the light from the environment comes in, bounces off the surface of our model, but scatters in all directions. Uh, when we talk about specular light, that's light coming in from our environment and bouncing off the model in a little bit more focused direction, but it's still not the same as mirror reflection where we get the light coming in and bouncing off in very specific directions. So in this chapter, we're going to talk about mirror reflection. Now, generally in computer graphics, uh, in offline rendering, when we want to do mirror reflection, we use ray tracing. And what that means is for each pixel on the surface of our model, we cast out rays away from the surface, and those rays collide with objects in our environment and uh, return specific colors. And that's the way that we determine uh, what, what colors the, the pixels of our reflection are. Now, in real-time graphics, ray tracing is a little bit too expensive. And so we want to find ways of simulating the look of reflection like I've got on this teapot, without actually doing all of the intensive work that ray tracing requires. And so in this chapter, we're going to talk about reflection mapping and how to achieve the look of reflections in real time. Now, the way that we do that is by using a cube map. Now, you'll probably remember that we talked about cube maps in depth on the second DVD in the series in chapter 10. We talked about uh, how to create cube maps, and I discussed two different methods. The first method was creating a cube map from light from the real world. Uh, and to do that, we used HDR Shop. And the second method was to create a cube map from a virtual environment that you've already created. And to do that, we took screen grabs of that environment, um, six different screen grabs, and then we assembled them in a program called CubeMapGen. Now, since I've already gone over that material in that chapter, uh, we're not going to go out over that again, but I just wanted to, to mention that really quickly, that those are the two different methods. Now, the cube map that I've got on this teapot here, we created with the first method that I mentioned, where I actually went and captured a light probe from my backyard, and then we as I assembled it in HDR Shop and made it into a cube map. So what I'd like to talk about next is actually how to apply this cube map in our shader so that we uh, can get the, the look of reflection mapping. So let's start out with uh, a really basic shader. This is the shader that we talked about uh, in our previous DVD where we have ambient lighting, we have diffuse lighting, and we have specular lighting. And I'm just going to go ahead and edit this shader now so that it has the code that we need uh, to, to achieve the look of reflection mapping. The first thing that I want to do is start using a different parser inside 3ds Max to parse our shader code. Up until now, on all of the DVDs so far, we've been using the standard Max parser. And what we, what we want to do is switch parsers. Max actually has several different parsers built in uh, that it uses for translating our shader code. Now, the standard Max parser has a little bit of a problem with cube maps. And so what I want to do is tell Max to use a different parser uh, to parse our code so that it can handle the cube maps a little bit better. So what I'm going to do is come up here to the very top of the shader. And I'm just going to paste in this line here. And this is telling Max that we want to use a new parser. Um, we want to use parser number three. And you'll notice that I've also got this comment out here. This string tells 3ds Max to use the DXSAS compiler. Now, what that means is uh, DXSAS is the DirectX standard annotation and syntax. And this is a standard that Microsoft has established to make effects shader code a little bit more uniform. So when I tell it to use parser 3, um, it's expecting the effects shader code to be in DXSAS format. Now what that means is we need to make a few changes to our header code 
so that we comply with DXS standards. And really, in our case, all we need to change is some of the naming conventions that we use here uh, for our textures. So right here where it says string name equals, I need to change this to string resource name because that's the uh, DXS standard. So I'm going to just copy this and paste it here and paste it here. So we've changed it to resource name. We also need to change this texture type to resource type. I'm just going to change this resource type. And you'll notice that it turns blue because it recognizes that term. I'm going to copy and paste this here. And so now we've converted our shader to DXS format. And now we can get right into the work of adding our reflection map. So here in Max, you'll notice that I've got a slot for diffuse texture, specular texture, and normal map. And what we need to do is add a new slot for the cube map that we're going to use. So I'll come back here to Effects Composer. And I'm just going to copy this texture map slot and paste it down here. And we're going to call this, instead of normal map, we're going to call it reflect map. And add the little optional label here of reflect map. You don't have to have this, but it's there anyway. Um, and for our resource name, we're going to call this default reflection.dds. And for our UI name, we're going to call this our reflection cube. And here it says string resource type equals 2D. Well, we know our map's not 2D. We're going to put a cube map in that slot, so we need to make the resource type cube. Now the next thing that we need to do is scroll down here, and we come to our texture samplers. These are the code units that actually sample from the texture map, and we need to add a new sampler for our cube map. So I'm going to copy, once again I'm going to copy the uh, normal map sampler, and we're going to change this into a cube map sampler instead. So right here where it says sampler 2D, of course that's not going to work, so we need to say, change this to sampler cube, and we're going to name it uh, reflect map sampler. And instead of sampling our normal map, we need to sample our reflect map. So this name here is the name of the actual texture that we're using. If I look up here, I can see that our texture is reflect map. So if I copy that, and paste it down here, our sampler will use the texture that's in that reflect map slot. And so we're done adding our cube map slot. And if I save it, come back here to max, and look at our material panel. And now we can see I've got this new slot for a reflection cube. I'm going to go ahead and fill that slot in with C Ben's Backyard. 16M. This 16 stands for 16-bit floating point, and the M stands for mirror. So instead of diffusely convolved cube map, like we talked about on the previous DVD, uh, we're talking about a mirror uh, cube map. So I'll go ahead and put that in your slot in the slot, and notice that there's no change here, and that's obviously because we haven't put any code into our pixel shader to sample from that map yet. So let's pull up Effects Composer again. And we'll scroll down here to our pixel shader and add a, a place where we actually sample from our cube map. So let's look up here at the top of our pixel shader. This is where we're sampling from our other textures. We're getting the color texture using text2D. This is a function that samples from a 2D texture map. And that's not quite what we want. Um, when you sample from a 2D texture map, you use the UV coordinates, which uses the space of the surface to figure out uh, where on the texture map to sample. And actually, if you think about it, uh, we're, we're sampling a cube map, which is a three-dimensional sample. What we want to do is shoot a vector out from the surface of our model. And if you, if you consider that the model is inside an inverted cube, 
where the walls of this cube uh, represent our cube map, if we cast a ray out from our model, wherever it intersects this cube that the model is inside, uh, the color that it hits is the color that's going to be applied to the surface of our model. And you can see this from, from this diagram. So we cast the ray out from the surface of our model, and it hits our cube, and that is uh, the color that we use um, to shade our model. So we don't want to use text 2D. In this case, what we want to use is called text cube. So let's come right in here to ambient light. We're going to put our reflection mapping in in the ambient light section because that's really what it is. We're not talking about diffuse light here or specular light. We're talking about light coming in from every direction, which generally we categorize as ambient. So I'm going to make a new float 4 here, and I'm going to call it ref. This is going to be our reflection color. And we're going to set that equal to text cube. And we want to sample our reflection map sampler. So let's come up here to the top of our shader and grab the name of our reflection map sampler, which is reflect map sampler. So in our text cube function, we're going to pass in reflect map sampler. And now we also need to pass it the, the vector that we're using. So if you remember, we go back to this diagram of our model in the middle of this inverted box. We have a vector coming out from the surface of our model and intersecting the box. And so what we need to pass it right here into text cube is what vector to use. Well, if you look up here, so far the, the vectors that we have are normal, uh, light vector, and view vector. None of those are quite right, um, but if we go back to the diagram again and you look here, if you think about these normal vectors coming out from the surface of our model, we could potentially use the normal vector. So let's go ahead and put n in here. So we're going to use the normal vector uh, to look up into our cube map. Now let me come down here really quick. And instead of returning our ambient, diffuse, and specular, I'm just going to make a temporary return. And we're just going to return ref. That way we can see exactly what we're getting uh, from our cube map. So I'm going to hit save here and update and we'll come over here to max. And you'll notice that it's updated. So now we have a model with our cube map applied, but of course it doesn't look quite right. Uh, for one thing, the reflection appears to be stuck to the surface. But you'll notice if we turn our, key, our teapot around, it's not actually stuck to the surface um, because it's sort of sliding around the surface. So we have something that sort of looks like reflection, but not quite. And the reason for that is because we're using the normal vector instead of the reflection vector. And the other thing that you might notice, if you come over here and look at these buildings, is that the cube map is turned on its side. So you can see these, these uh, buildings that you can see from my backyard that are sideways. So we have two issues. We need to calculate the reflection vector, and we also need to fix this sidewaysness of the cube map. Now, the reason it's coming in that way is because Max is a Z-up environment. And so we have to compensate for this Z-up environment um, by doing a little bit of uh, changing around of our vectors. So let's talk about how to solve these first these two issues. First we're going to we're going to tackle the uh the reflection vector issue. So let's bring up effects composer again. And we want to come in here to the spot where we're sampling from our cube map and we're going to calculate our reflection vector. So we're going to make a new float 3 for our vector and we're going to call this our ref vector. And there's a nice intrinsic function built into HLSL called reflect that we're going to use. And what we want to do is calculate the reflection vector between the view vector and our surface normal. 
Now, if you remember, in chapter 11 of our second DVD, we talked about uh, reflection vectors, and we had this nice diagram where we showed that uh, the surface normal is pointing straight out from the surface. And we have our view vector coming in, and the result of the reflection of our surface normal and our view vector is this nice vector coming out the other side, which is kind of like the opposite of our view vector. So if I do a reflection between the view vector and the surface normal, uh, I'm going to get the opposite vector from the view vector, or the reflected vector from the view vector. So now I can use my ref vector instead of the normal. So I'm going to paste ref vector in here, hit save, and we'll come back and see what we get in max. So you'll notice that it updates. And now when I rotate my scene around, you'll notice that what we're getting looks a lot more like reflection. Um, it's kind of warping as I rotate the scene. And it also warps uh, as I rotate the teapot itself. So what we've got now is the correct reflection behavior. And now we need to fix our second problem, which was compensating for the fact that 3ds Max is Z up and uh, our cube map is, is intended to be Y up. So let's come back in here to Effects Composer. And what we need to do is swap the Y and the Z components of our ref vector before we use ref vector to sample our cube map. So I'm going to add another line here, and I'm going to say, ref vector dot yz equals ref vector dot dy. Now what I'm doing here is swapping the y component with the z component. So in order to compensate for the fact that max is a z up environment, we're replacing the z with the y. So if I save this here, come back into max. And now you can see that we're completely upside down. So we almost made it. <laughs> uh, so let's add another, another little thing here. What we need to add is, in addition to our swizzle here, swapping the y and z, we also need to add a negative. And this will serve to uh, flip the cube map uh, right side up. So I'll save it, come back over to max. Now we have a right side up cube map and everything looks correct. We've compensated for the fact that max is Z up. So now we're getting pretty good looking reflection map results. It looks a little bit dark and that's because this particular cube map that I've created is a high dynamic range cube map. So I'm gonna go ahead and come back in here to effects composer and say return ref. And I'm just gonna multiply this by five and what that's going to do is just brighten it up so that we have a, a nice, bright, shiny teapot. And if you look right here, you can make out the very back of my house. <laughs> so there's the cube map that I took in my backyard. So that wraps up our chapter on reflection mapping. We learned how to add a cube map texture slot right there. And we learned how to add our cube map sampler right here. And we also went over uh, the switch from the standard max parser to our DX SAS parser. And finally, we learned how to sample our or compute our reflection vector and sample our cube map. And then we uh, returned the value of the cube map. In the next chapter, we're going to go over some actual application of this reflection mapping. And we're going to talk about how to create a metal shader by blending a diffusely convolved cube map uh, with a mirror cube map like the one we talked about here to achieve a metal look.